Hi everyone! Today we're doing six advanced belay hacks to help you and your climbing partners send your projects this fall. <laughs> Making our moms wait while we film this. <laughs> Number one, taking quickly. When do we do this? When the climber is close to or under a bolt. Take, take. We never take quickly when the climber is above a bolt. This will result in the climber slamming against the wall and we definitely don't want that. You're getting so fast at this. Wait. Why? To conserve energy while projecting. It's very efficient to utilize rests while trying a climb with hard moves in it. Take. The climber can take advantage of the rest time to read beta, recover, and prep for the next moves. Why do we do it fast? The climber is likely gripped and maybe a bit scared up there. Fast takes are the physical embodiment of, I got you sis. How do we do this? The climber yells, take. take. The belayer then simultaneously grabs a loop of slack while stepping back and sitting. This results in the fastest take that will make your climbing partner feel immediately safe to let go. We love it. Tip number two, going in hard or direct. When? After the belayer has taken in the slack. Why? so your belayer can chill too and readjust. Often when they've just taken in slack, especially if they do so quickly, the belayer is in a compromised position away from the wall. Allowing them the chance to walk in and readjust mitigates the chance of something happening where they lose their footing and slam against the wall. How? The climber attaches a quick draw to their belay loop on their harness. The climber then grabs a hold or a hanging draw and clips the other end of the quick draw into the metal side of the hanging draw or the bolt itself. This is the best practice, metal to metal side, rope side to harness. Tip number three, soft catches. Whee! When? Always, unless you're close to the ground. A hard catch is better than decking. Why? So your partner doesn't slam into the wall and hurt themselves. Soft catches also create a positive association with falling rather than a scary or painful one. How? The blayer should keep a soft J in the rope. The momentum of the climber falling on the rope cues the blayer to act. Depending on the weight difference, the blayer usually must step up or jump up with both hands on the brake side. As the belayer, you want to try to time your step or jump exactly with the climber waiting for rope. It's a skill that requires a lot of practice. The perfect catching technique changes with each fall and relationship. If you're significantly lighter than all your climbing partners, you'll be pulled up by the force of the climber falling, so just enjoy the ride and don't worry too much about this tip. If you're really light, I'd suggest getting an ohm, a device that helps break some of the weight of the heavier climber's fall. Whoa. This is Irina. Whoa, I've always wanted a no-drill hang board before. She not only wants to improve her belay skills, but also get her fingers strong and ready for her next sport trip. Huh, usually this works. It really didn't take Dan that much time. It's an easy and convenient no-drill setup. Oh my gosh, this is sick. And it took me no time. Oh, well, cool. These never fit on my weird old doors. Irina lives in an old house and her ceilings are super short, so she can never fit bars or hangboards on her door frames. This was a small miracle. So cool. Whoa, these never fit on your weird old doors. I know, right? Irina's starting out her finger training journey and the edge variation on this board is actually perfect for her to progress from 30 millimeters all the way to 15 with various offset hand options. She can even do this on days when she can't make it to the gym, which is a full game changer. That's and there's sick. even space here to put on micros if you want. Oh, eventually, Wait. maybe. Do you, want, do you mind if I? Yeah, yeah, go for it. Use the link in the description below to find your perfect fictitious hangboard. When you add a doorway mount to the order, you get an extra 20% off, making an at-home training setup easier than ever. Woo! Tip number four, boinking. When you're stuck in the air after a cave whip, what to do? You must boink to get back to that cave route. Blech. First, the belayer should take up slack and sit on the rope, preparing for the boink. It's a bit tricky to do this without lowering your climber, but with a bit of practice, you'll get used to grabbing the rope and jumping into it without losing mileage. With the belayer's weight on the rope, the climber is now ready to boink. The climber grabs as high as they possibly can on the rope with both hands, yoinks down, hip thrusts into the air like they're Mr. Fosbury himself. This is boink. Beware. It's easy to slam the blayer into the ground when the climber gets overexcited with their aggressive hip thrusts. Watch out for this. Extra spicy tip for you rope nerds out there. And pull the rope up. Yes! Okay. You see how I didn't move that time? I see. Yes! 
Holy shit, that's a workout. You can use an ascender for both the belay and the boink to save your skin from the rope. So energy efficient. <laughs> Tip number five, using the belay rope to get back on the wall. When you're stuck hanging away from an overhanging wall, but you're also on top rope because everyone knows top roping is the purest form of climbing. Or you know, you fell on lead and you wanna redo the section, which means you're on a top. Or maybe you don't feel like boinking, or maybe you just wanna put your belayer to work. Holy shit, that's a workout. Any of these options work for when you'll use the classic rope swing technique. Why? It's effective for getting closer to the wall after a fall, and it's kind of fun. How? The belayer walks next to the climber with their end of the rope. The climber latches on and the belayer swings the climber into the route. Whee! Extra tip here, the climber can always use the belayer's side of the rope to jug up the climb. Pulling down on the belayer's rope lifts the climber up quickly and efficiently. And the sixth and final step is the slow lower. When? When the climber is getting back onto the wall after a fall. Why? No one likes a fast release. How? The climber gets into position on the wall, and right when they're grabbing the holds they want and they're ready to start climbing, they say climbing. As quick as you like, the belayer simultaneously walks in a little and slowly releases the climber back onto the wall in one fluid and controlled motion. This is also the technique for lowering after your partner gets to the chains. In this case, the climber isn't getting back onto the wall, so you don't have to worry about jolting them, but it's important to walk forward before lowering to avoid a risky situation where the belayer slams into the wall from the horizontal force. What are you doing? I clearly haven't watched Anna Hazelnut's video on six hats. Okay, I'm gonna lower you down. Good luck with your project. Uh, wait, shoot, sorry, I got nervous. Well, there you have it. Those are six more advanced belay sport climbing tips. Good luck on your projects, and don't forget to subscribe. Bye. Huge thank you to Frictitious Climbing for supporting this video. And just a quick reminder, you can get 20% off any of their hangboards with a doorway mount. No promo code, drill, or setup needed.